It's time now for a look latest in local news. And the new sheriff, Chuck Mosley, announces that Atlanta's Paul Brown is in custody as of Tuesday afternoon as he was arrested in Jessup without incident. Brown is charged with felony murder and aggravated assault and other charges in the Friday morning shooting death of Zachary Johnson, which occurred on Community Circle around 11 a.m. Law enforcement have been searching for Brown since Friday, and the sheriff Mosley wants to thank the Uniform Patrol Division, this criminal investigation unit, the Jessup PD, and the Tattle County Sheriff's Office for their diligent work in the apprehension of Mr. Brown. Shooting occurred after an altercation between the two men. The investigation is ongoing. Again, good news, Lannis Paul Brown in custody at this time. Chief Perry Morgan and Jessup PD announced that on Wednesday, February 1st, they received a report of a shooting incident that took place in the early evening hours of 118 Shamrock Avenue in Jessup. Criminal Investigation Division responded and processed the scene. Victim of the shooting is Elijah Malik Fussell, age 22, of Jessup. He's listed in stable condition. Resulting investigation determined the identity of the suspect is Isaiah Jadarian Bugs, age 33, of Jessup. Isaiah Bugs was taken into custody without incident on Tuesday, February the 7th. Investigations ongoing may result in further arrests being made. Chief Morgan reminds everyone that all persons arrested and charged are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Chief Morgan encourages anyone with information pertaining to this case or any other criminal activity, simply contact the Jessup PD at 427-1300. Reminder today, at Coastal Pines Technical College, that Big Career Expo taking place, the time today from 3 to 7 p.m. They state if you're looking for a job or a new career, they state you want to check it out today. Features several local industries and businesses with current job openings and on-site interviews taking place today. This being sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce along with several companies, Ray and Ear, Sierra International Machinery, Yellowwood, Camores, Georgia Power, EAM, Wayne Moore Hospital, and a career expo being held today here in Wayne County, 3 to 7 p.m. at Coastal Pines Technical College. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. In other news, we've got more from the county commission meeting this past Monday as board members not in agreement on whether or not they should impose term limits on local elected officials in Wayne County. Only one county in the entire state of Georgia has term limits on elected officials. Monday night, a lengthy discussion with the vote of 3-2 to put the issue on a ballot let the voters decide. Here was the lengthy discussion on term limits Monday night at the county commissioner's meeting. It has term limits to Black County, which was uh, invoked by the governor in 88 after a lawsuit between the counties, between the municipalities. They put it up for a referendum again in 04, I think, and it was narrowly voted in. Just last month on the uh, in the Region Commission meeting, the chairman of Tarrant County has joined the Region Commission uh, board, and he says that uh, they get ready to try to put that back up for referendum. And he said since it's passed, un passed un uh, with a small margin, uh, he's. He's saying that it's not going to pass again. They're going to vote it out. And I think he was one of the ones that didn't want to say. I well, spoke to the representative of Chilford County. Uh, they admit that they have a problem with it. They're, uh, they're limited to two four-year terms. I think that's too short. Ours is three four-year terms with two-year terms in between. So our uh, resolution would be looking Depending on when the commissioner comes in, he comes in with a two-year term. He's looking at 18 years to serve. He comes in at a four-year term. He's looking at 16 years to serve. I think that's ample for anyone. Well, I was challenged by Chairman Prairie to go to my constituents, people in my district, and ask them what they felt about this. And I've been doing that today. I was I was doing it last Friday. And I've called a lot of people. I've met people. The communication that I'm getting back from my constituents is that's not a priority for them. What a priority is is lowering the taxes. <laughs> Talking about what's going to happen with the courthouse, about the safety thing, the quality of life, community center, pools. That's the kind of things that they said this term thing really was not a priority to them. And the last person I talked to, and you heard exact words, if you don't do your job, Tim, I will, I will vote you out. So I did what you asked, and that's the response that I've got from 10 different people. 
Not one of them had communicated to me that their board is terminated. So. Well, and I think that's why we want to put it on a referendum so that everybody has the opportunity to voice their opinion whether they want it or not. And if they don't vote for it, I'm good. At least we gave them the option because I've had several people that have talked to me and uh, have had concerns about it. I, know, I realize other counties may not have it, but we do have some of the longest running county commissioners ever in the state of Georgia. And, um, one. <laughs> one. Okay, just one. Okay, just one. So y'all need to worry about them. That's right. Well, and it's, it's not as a pun to you. I, I'm not going to say how old you would be if this did pass, it, uh, if it did affect you. But either way, I think that there's no harm in putting it on the on the ballot so that the voters can make that decision and we don't have just a few constituents, which I do listen to my constituents and what they want. And again, once again, they voted to put it on a referendum before the voters. Both Tim Hopkins and James Thomas voted no, but it passed 3-2. Chairman Kevin McCurry, Mike Gordon, and Jamie Hickox voting yes. Once again, the commission wants it before the voters. Let them decide. The limit would be a three, four-year term. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes the news, the Wayne County Board of Tours are preparing for their annual hog jam set for the weekend of February 17th to 19th with headquarters at the J.C. Fair Building. Registration rules are available through active.com or registration forms can be printed from the Tourism Board website at waynetourism.com. Registration is $50 for bow or gun hunters, or hunters can pay $100 and hunt in both categories. Hunter 16 under hunt free with a registered adult hunter. Heather Altman will be with us this Friday on the Butch and Bob Show. She'll have all the details of the hog jam again set for February 17th through the 19th. Wayne County Historical Society meets Thursday, February the 9th at Captain Joe's Seafood Restaurant. Guest speaker for the evening will be County Commissioner James Booth Thomas. who will speak on growing up at Doctor Time. Other stories from his youth. The program will begin at 7. It's preceded by the Dutch Meal at 6. Memberships are being accepted for the 2023 calendar year as well. Memberships and curries, guests are welcome. And that's Thursday, February 9th at Captain Joe's Seafood Restaurant. And the Wayne County Board of Education gearing up for their East Blossom election again takes place on Tuesday, March 21st. There will be three weeks of early voting that will begin on February 27th and run through March the 17th. All early voting will take place at Hall Richards and Rec Center located at 660 North 4th Street from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. There will be two early voting Saturdays. The first will take place on March the 4th. Second will be on March the 11th. Times for early Saturday voting will be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also at the Hall Richardson Recreation Center. And the election day is set for March 21st. On that date, voters will vote at their assigned precincts to vote. Polls on that Tuesday, March 21st, will open at 7 a.m. and remain open until 7 p.m. on election day. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying a great day.